Fractional exponents are where exponents and radicals meet. By now you already know about whole number exponents and what they mean. For example, 10 with an exponent 2 is 10 to the power 2, or 10 times 10. 2 with an exponent 3, or 2 to the power 3, is 2 times 2 times 2. But what in the world does 4 to the power 1 half mean? It turns out that 4 to the power 1 half means the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. Similarly, 25 to the power 1 half is equal to the square root of 25, which is equal to 5. We can generalize using x to the power 1 half, where x is a variable that can stand for any positive number x to the power 1 half is just equal to the square root of x. So what do you think x to the power 1 third means? If you guess the cube root of x, you're right. So let's go the other way. The cube root of 64 is the same as 64 to what power? We see it's 64 to the power 1 third. The 3 which tells us it's a cube root is the same as the 3 in the denominator of the fractional exponent. And as you know, the cube root of 64 is equal to 4. 4 times 4 times 4 is equal to 64. Now the 4th root of 16 would be the same as 16 to what power? If you guess 16 to the power 1 quarter, you're right. Do you remember what the 4th root of 16 is? It's the number that multiplied by itself 4 times equals 16. 2 multiplied by itself 4 times comes out to 16. So the 4th root of 16, or 16 to the power 1 quarter, is equal to 2. Let's take the square of the square root and see what happens. We'll take the square root of 9 and square it. The square root of 9 squared is the square root of 9 times the square root of 9. Because the square root of 9 is 3, this is 3 times 3. And 3 times 3 equals 9. So the square root of 9 squared is simply equal to 9. We can generalize and say that the square root of any positive number squared is just equal to the number. In other words, squaring will cancel out a square root. Squaring and taking the square root are opposites of each other. Just a note here, when we mention the square root of a number, the number must either be zero or a positive number. The square root of a negative number is not a real number. Using the variable x to represent any positive number, the square root of x squared is just equal to x. It's also handy to know that the cube root of any number, cubed, is just equal to the number. We don't have to specify a positive number here because we can take the cube root of a negative number. So cubing will cancel out a cube root. Again, they are just opposites of each other. The equation shows that the cube root of x, raised to the third power, or cubed, is just equal to x. At this point, you can probably guess that the 4th root of any positive number raised to the 4th power is just equal to the number. Like a square root, we cannot take the 4th root of a negative number, so we specify a positive number here. This equation shows that the 4th root of x to the 4th power is just equal to x. It's very important to know these equations. They'll come in very handy later on when you solve equations involving radicals. We can generalize here by saying that the yth root of a number raised to the power y is just equal to the number. We will specify here that if y represents an even root, like a square root, fourth root, or sixth root, etc., the number under the radical, or x, must be a positive number. But if y represents an odd root, like a cube root, fifth root, or seventh root, etc., the number under the radical, or x, can be positive or negative. 
We saw here that taking a number to the fractional exponent one half is the same as taking the square root of the number. Or x to the power one half is the same as the square root of x. Similarly, we saw that taking a number to the fractional exponent one third is the same as taking the cube root of the number. Or x to the power one third is the same as the cube root of x. We also discovered that taking the yth root of a number and raising it to the power y just gives us the original number. These are all things that will help you later on.